Hello guys, in this video we will take a look at how to do token authentication flow with AWS Cognito. Amazon Cognito provides authentication, authorization and user management for your web and mobile apps. Your users can sign in directly with a username and password or through a third party such as Facebook, Amazon, Google or Apple. The two main components of Amazon Cognito are user pools and identity pools. User pools are user directories that provide sign up and sign in options for your app users. Identity pools enable you to grant your users access to other AWS services. You can use identity pools and user pools separately or together. For our application, we will be using just a user pool. In order to do token authentication flow, we need to do the following steps. We need to create Cognito user pool in AWS, add app client, and configure user pool hosted UI. I'm not going to go into the details on how to do it, but there is a good video in a Be A Better Dev YouTube channel that can walk you through that, and the link will be in the description. The next step will be to redirect user to user pool hosted UI, which will be essentially login or sign in page. Then we're going to receive access token in a callback on the front end. After that, front end will make a call to the back end to get user information using this access token. And back end, we're going to take the access token and make a call to app client auth to user info endpoint to retrieve the user information. And then it will send it back to the front end. At this point, if the user information is in the application, user is considered to be authenticated. Right here, I created React Express uh, Turbo User Pool. As I mentioned before, if you are new to AWS Cognito or AWS in general, check out the YouTube channel Be A Better Dev and for Cognito, search Cognito related videos. Here are the general settings for React Express uh, Turbo User Pool. So. Let's go over the settings, each page. So you can see that I already created a user right here. There here, you can put some attributes. There are some policies you can enable. Well, actually everything is done here by default. Uh, MFA verification, if you want to, you can enable. Also, you can do advanced security. You can customize email messages. Currently, I'm sending the default Cognito emails, but if you're going to go in production or you need uh, more emails, the recommended way is to use Amazon SES, simple email service. Also, you can configure tags. Also, you can uh, remember user devices. Here's the app client. So you will need to create an app client. So I named my app client React Express Turbo. And here's the details, the refresh token expiration, I put it at maximum, so for 10 years. And then there's access token and ID token. So I put the expiration at 10 minutes each. So when token expires, I can test uh, reauthentication. So right here, auth flow configuration will be selected by default. So just use the defaults and enable token revocation and security also use the defaults. Here, there also you can configure Lambda triggers, but I didn't configure anything. So enable analytics. All right, now another important thing that you want to do is app client settings. So here you can enable identity providers. Also put callback URL. This will be the dashboard page of our application. Then here you select authorization grant and implicit grant. Client credentials are less secure, so I usually don't select it. And then you put the scopes, All right? Then you create a domain name and you can either have your own domain name or for development testing purposes, you just put any kind of prefix you want. So I chose React Express Turbo. As soon as you save this, you will have an option to launch your hosted UI. So you're going to have your UI here where a user can log in or sign up. We are going to 
going to redirect the user to this hosted UI. Also, you can customize UI. So you go to app client, you select your app client, and you can do the customizations, labels, input fields, upload your logo. So the UI looks as much the same as possible as your application. There's also resource servers you can configure. And the next part is the federation. Here you have identity providers. So you can configure logging in with Google or Facebook or Amazon and it kind of comes out of the box so you basically have to configure your id secret and then if you enable it user will be able to sign in with amazon let's say and uh, if you're using identity provider you have an option to map uh, provider attributes to your user pool attributes for example maybe i'll be mapping in my case an email okay here is a quick breakdown of the react express turbo user pool that i created earlier and as i said for the most part we will be interested in app clients and app client settings on app client settings page let's go ahead and click launch hosted ui what we're going to do is to copy this link now let's go to the project code and update that env file in the root of the project In Vit Cognito UI URL, let's change response type from code to token. This will be a token authentication flow with Cognito. So the user, after entering their credentials, will be redirected to the front end application with an access token and identity token in the URL. And we already have a code in place to grab that token and store it in the cookie of the application. Let's go to landing.tsx file and we're going to import user ID from the user store. And we're going to update the go to dashboard function. So if there is user ID, we'll navigate to dashboard. If not, we will redirect the user to Cognito UI URL. So now let's go to the button and uh, let's put the ternary logic there if there is user id we'll put go to dashboard if not we'll just say login or sign in now let's go ahead and install access in, into the back end and then in a server.ts file we'll go to the api user endpoint and make uh, certain changes so we'll make the async function put a try catch if we catch an error We'll just log that error. And also we can return status 404 not found. Okay, and now we're going to make access request itself. And we'll make it to the Cognito endpoint. And the auth to user info. And then we'll just pass the headers that we receive from the front end authorization, just rec headers authorization, right? Let's go ahead and import Axis. So now we can return JSON, we can return ID, the response data sub, and also the name, response data dot name. And since Cognito ID is a string, we need to go ahead in user store and change ID to stream. And we can delete API client import while we add it. Okay, let's see how it looks in the browser. Let's go ahead to localhost 3001 and it prompts us to log in. We get redirected to login form. We can also sign up if we want, but it already signed up. So let me go ahead and sign in. And I get redirected into applications dashboard. And now I can click on the button. The API endpoint works. I can go to application header. And now I see go to dashboard message on the button. So let's go back again. Let's refresh. And it looks like we are logged in and we can go to the dashboard. So everything is working except the good idea would be 
to put a loader on the button. Let's do just that. Okay, we go to the landing page, right? And we're gonna import uh, loading from the user store. Now we're gonna go to the button and we're gonna put loading loading okay we save our changes 10 minutes has passed let's refresh the page and we're getting kicked out we need to log in again so let's go to login page i'm gonna put login username and password and we're logged in again so let's go back to the application go to dashboard go back refresh we're not getting kicked out and we're in a good shape oh well, thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video